In today's video, I'm going to show you items you can get at the dollar store that will really be helpful in your quilt studio. Hi, I'm Kim Jamison Hurst of Chatterbox Quilts, and I was at the dollar store the other day and found just a few things that I think are going to be really helpful in my studio, and I wanted to share those with you. So here they are, but I'm going to go through them one at a time and show you what they are and how I think I can use them in my studio. The first item I wanted to share with you is this rack. So they call this a vinyl coated vertical organizer. I thought it was sort of like a dish rack at first, but it is a vinyl vertical organizer, vinyl coated vertical organizer. And this will be helpful in the studio for holding a lot of different things like templates. So I love Martelli products. I have a lot of their templates and I think this would be really helpful to store those templates especially when I'm actually using them. So I usually have the templates all over the place. I think it'd be really helpful to have this on my uh, cutting area and get all my templates stacked in there. And they're just kind of there, but out of the way when I'm working with them. So I think that'd be really helpful. The other thing I think they'd work really well with is rulers too. So for example, if I take that other, you could put rulers in as well and keep those in place too. So I think that would be helpful for ruler storage as well. Talking about ruler storage, I like to take my rulers and I like to put a piece of fabric uh, through the hole in them or sometimes trim, a lot of times it's ribbon, and I like to hang these so it keeps them near where I need them but out of the way. And I also thought this might be really helpful. This is an over the door hooks and there's actually seven hooks on here. So I think you could put this over the door and then you could hang your rulers from them like this. I always love storage items that don't take up much space. So this one being over the door, that's unused space. I think it'd be great to put it, you know, over a door in my studio. I have several in my studio and then be able to hang my hangers that hang my rulers there, I should say. And then I can see them and easily get at them, but they're kind of out of the way. So that's another thing I picked up at the dollar store. I think it's gonna be really helpful. Here's something else I found. This is a uh, zipper seal reusable bags and there's two large bags in here. I can get them out here. Okay, I have to take off the label here. Lots of packaging on this. Okay, when I get that off there, oh my, still more, still more packaging. Okay, so I've got these two uh, zipper type bags which should open like Ziplocs. Okay, so there we go. We can just split them apart and they open up like that. And then I think I could use these for storing projects. So I've got some blocks here that I'm working with to make a quilt top and those will just go in there and then I can seal them right up again. I can still see what's in them, but I could also write on them with a Sharpie marker and put on them what's in there. Or I could just leave them like this because I can see what's in there. So I think these would be really handy to keep my project pieces together, keep them from getting lost and protect them from fur and dust in the studio while I'm working on that project. Here's something else I pick up. This is a shower curtain liner. It's clear. I was looking for a clear one. It's vinyl and it's fairly thin, which is fine for my purposes. Might not be so great in the shower actually, but because it's very thin, <laughs> but it does have a little weights in it or a little magnets, so you can keep it against your bathtub if it's metal, that is. I'm trying to find an edge here of it because it's pretty darn big. I'm trying to find a single layer of it because it's pretty darn thin. Here we go. So I can open this up. So yes, I can see through it. And I wanted to use this to audition quilt designs on quilt blocks. So I have part of a quilt I'm working on right now. So if I put it up like this and I put this over top of it, you can see through it. You can see that you can see through it. And then I could take some whiteboard markers and demo out some designs. So I could try out some designs. So let's see here. You may have to tape this down a bit because it's kind of wrinkly and you can't really press it to get the wrinkles out, right? But let's just see here. So if I wanted to go in here and I wanted to try something like this, for example, you know, maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I want to do something like this. You know, you get the idea. So I could just audition those and then when I'm done, I can just either use this, I'm not sure how well these work quite frankly, or 
of course, paper towel always works to take off the dry erase marks. And you can just take them off like that. I have to scrub at it a little bit to get it off. But you get the idea. So I think this would work really well for auditioning designs, and there's a lot of it. So if I can't get the dry erase marker off, I could just cut that area out, and I've still got lots and lots of this to use for a very little price point. Here's something else I came across in the craft department. These are wooden dowels, and I have problems keeping my bobbins and cones together. Uh, there are different products you can get that will keep like smaller thread spools and their bobbins together. However, when it comes to cones, I found that to be a bit of an issue. So I think that these thin wooden dowels will work for this purpose. Now, they are fairly long, and I probably don't need them this long, so I could get them cut in half. But, or maybe I want to stack several cones on top. But you can see how that's going to fit through that bobbin and allow me to keep those two together. So I think this would be really helpful too. As I say, I would cut them down for sure. And maybe even glue a little button on top or something like that. And that way I could just stick it down here. The little button would be on top and that would keep them both together really well. So I think that would be a really good idea. And again, very economical. Now here's something that has lots and lots of different uses in the studio. This is a shelf and drawer liner, so it's that rubbery type uh, product that you will usually use to line your drawers, and that can be helpful in the studio too. I use it in uh, drawers in my Alex units that I have from Ikea to keep things from sliding around, but it's also really great to put underneath your foot pedal to keep it from sliding around on the floor. So if you have like I do, I have cork floor. If you have laminate or hardwood or something like that, you might find your foot pedal sliding around a lot. So you could put this underneath it and it keeps your foot pedal from sliding around. So that's gonna be really helpful in when you are sewing. And talking about sewing, you know that you need to clean out that bobbin area in your sewing machine. Sometimes there's other areas that you can get access to as well that need to be kept lint free. So after you've done a major project or after you've been quilting, you probably, well definitely, should be cleaning out that bobbin area. So you can use, this is an artist brush set, so you can use paint brushes and that's actually what I use a lot of the time to clean out my bobbin area, lots of them there. Or you could use makeup brushes. So again, like I said, you may have different areas that you go into, so you can use these and that picks up all the lint and then you can clean them off, vacuum them off if you need to, and that's going to keep your machine running much, much better. Earlier, I talked about those wooden dowels that'll keep your thread cone and your bobbin together. Well, what about just keeping your bobbins corralled properly? So I picked up this ice cube tray with cover, and there's a little uh, part here that you can lift off the cover, and I think this would be great for keeping your little bobbins in line. As a matter of fact, I would suggest that you could pick up a few of these and then you could have, say, for example, all your cotton bobbins in one, all your rayon in another, all your polyester in another. So that helps to keep them from rolling around in your drawer. <laughs> and it would also let you know what content, what fiber content is on those bobbins. So I think this is going to be really helpful and you can just stack them up or put them in a drawer and they would be great storage for your bobbins. There are also a lot of tablecloths in the dollar store, and I picked up this one because it's flannel backed. So when you take this out, let's see if I can get it open for us here. And of course, you can pick your favorite color or design, but it has flannel backing on them. So this is good for holding up blocks, a portable design wall, really. So you can see that you've got the the flannel backing on it. So you could just hang this up. You could even use a hanger with clips on it, like clothespins, and hang it there. You could pin it up to a wall, depends on where you are and what the surface is. And then you can put your different blocks on here and move them around, organize them, and they're gonna stay there. As a matter of fact, if you were at a retreat and you put them on here, you could actually just fold up, the, you know, leave the blocks on, fold it up, maybe roll it up, bring it home, and then carefully unroll it again. Hopefully those blocks should all be in the same place again. So if you need a portable design wall, maybe you don't even have a place for a design wall in your studio, a flannel back tablecloth is a great temporary solution. Now I've come down to my favorite item that I have gotten at the dollar store. And this was because one of my friend, Stephen, suggested this. And this is a little beard trimmer. Now it's battery operated. And so you can replace the batteries and it's still gonna work for you. 
You don't really need the little guides on it, I don't think, unless you actually want to use it for beard trimming. But what I like to use it for is to remove stitches from my seams should I need to. So let me just show you how that works. So if you have to remove seams, you know what a pain that can be. This is a great solution. And the thing I really, really like about this, besides the fact that it removes the stitches really quickly, is the fact that you don't have to worry about it cutting your fabric. So I don't know about you, but for me, there's been a few times where I have actually gone through and cut one of the pieces of fabric with my seam ripper when I was trying to take out stitches. So with this, I don't have to worry about that. So let me show you how it works. Just like that. So you may have to remove a few of the stitches at the beginning just so that you can get the little trimmer in there and it's better you could even tape this down with double-sided tape uh, so that it stays there because you need to kind of pull the top layer away from it but you can see how quickly that took that away you could see I was right in there with the trimmer and I didn't even have to worry didn't do any damage to that fabric at all a lot safer I think than the seam ripper so those are the items I picked up on my most recent trip to the dollar store. And if you've enjoyed this video and you want to help support the Chatterbox Quilts YouTube channel, you can donate as little as $2 to do so. You will see the little heart with the dollar sign in it underneath this video. You can click on that and donate whatever amount you feel comfortable to support this channel. Now I've shown you the different items I've got at the dollar store, but there are other items that you can get that are really helpful in the quilt studio. And if you're wondering what those are, don't worry, I've got you covered. Check out this video that will give you all the information you need. For more helpful quilting information, please go to my website at www.chatterboxquilts.com.